Good morning, Oakland Center, and all of you out there, wherever you may be. Please join with me as I sing Return to You. Return to me. Return. something that we can really use a lot of right now. How about let's let it rain, rain. <laughs> Thank you. Rain is coming. Yes. Rain is here. Good morning. Thank you so much to our fabulous musicians, Kenneth Cozy Arrington, Deb Santa Maria. Lots of virtual love, applause, high fives. Thank you so much. Um, good morning and welcome to the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, where we teach spiritual principles and practices that nourish us, uplift us, and celebrate our oneness with all of life. Welcome to everyone this morning and a very special welcome to those of you joining us for the first time on a Sunday morning. If you'd like to learn more and connect with us in any way, you can send an email to Constance Chapman, our administrative coordinator at Constance at oaklandcsl.org. In order to maintain a sacred atmosphere this morning, I invite you to please take a moment to make sure your Zoom microphone is muted and your camera turned off. And now let's take a moment to bless our children wherever they are. <laughs> Mine are jumping on the floor above me and you might hear them. <laughs> We're blessing them too. We honor all our youth and children in our community and the world. We love you. We see you. 
You are spirit's gift to us. Thank you for being in our lives. And so it is. I have just a few announcements this morning. This Wednesday, practitioner Susan Urquhart Brown will be speaking on stretching into presence. Meditation is at 6.30 and service is at 7. Also, the CALM, Compassionate Attention to Loss Group, meets next Sunday at 12.30 after service. The topic is Good Grief, Grieving as an Activity of Love. We have other small groups to nourish and uplift you at Oakland CSL. Devotions for Spiritual Journey meets daily Monday through Friday at noon for a half an hour. This short spiritual uplift is enriching, and we always come away with at least one nugget to contemplate. We also have a weekly reading discussion group, Tuesdays at 3 in person with practitioner Susan Brecker, and Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom with practitioner Zoe DeMuro. Check the events page of the website for detail on all of these groups. By the way, we raised $650 from the Relax and Release Sound Meditation last Sunday. This money is going in memory of Reverend Jeff to the Oakland, to the CSL Capital Fundraising for a Teen Camp and Retreat Center in Oregon. Thank you so much to all of you who donated and participated. You can check the Village News and the website, uh, oaklandcsl.org, for more information on the fundraiser and all of the events at Oakland Center. Now, please read along with me as I read our vision and mission statement. The vision of the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living is to joyfully reveal the love and oneness of God. We are a welcoming and inclusive spiritual community dedicated to individual transformation and collective growth. Our purpose is to love, inspire, and serve our community and the world through education, music, prayer, and play. And so it is. Now I'd like to introduce Regina Buckwalter for her beautiful words and prayers. Good morning. So good to be here on Earth Day as we celebrate <clears throat> the divine connection to the earth and to our bodies. The first reading is from Ernest Holmes. We must climb over the rocks of unbelief, pass around the barriers of doubt, and plunge into the stream with faith. The second reading is by Michelle Obama. You can't make decisions based on fear and the possibility of what might happen. Wow, well, okay. So let us all settle. And I mean settle into the sensation of breath as breath is what reminds us that we are one with God. The breath is always there, our constant companion, as breath is spirit moving through us. Spirit is not a concept. Spirit is not a good idea. Spirit is real and thriving and moving through us. And we just say yes to that breath and yes to sensation through us. Yes to our feet, touching the earth, the sacred earth, the earth that is here to support us on our human journey on earth. As we say yes to the breath, yes to sensation, yes to feeling, and yes, to the moment. I celebrate this day. I celebrate the support that I receive from Mother Earth. 
I celebrate the calm that it gives me. I celebrate the breath dropping down in through me and illuminating every single cell of my body as it rejoices in the divine light of God. As that light is always moving through me. Spirit is not a concept. Spirit is not a good idea. Spirit is a felt experience of breath and light and love that moves through us. It is a comfort. It is the abundance. It is the goodness of God that is always with us. It is the infinite presence of power that moves through us and dissolves all of our fears and doubts as we move into the stream of faith and surrender and say yes to God. Spirit is with us always. Spirit is our divine center, the movement of light and love within us that which dissolves fear as we drop in and we say yes i am one with that divine presence i am one with infinite possibilities no matter what the external circumstances are of my life right now i say yes to that movement of god spirit love and light through me bathing my cells and i know that is the comfort it is always with me. It is the peace. It is the joy. It is the harmony. And it is felt and it is real. And I bless the service today. I bless Reverend Catherine Sox, who was here to speak with us, inspire us, soothe us as we continue into this process of releasing our dear Reverend Jeff Anderson, as we drop in and celebrate all of the beautiful gifts and blessings that he has bestowed upon his community during his time with us. And we drop into the celebration of this transition. And I bless all of the people that are come here to support the service, the musicians, the tech people, and the divine community, the sacred community, the joyous community of Oakland Center, as we have come together as one during this time, giving one another the support that we all need. And I am so very grateful knowing this, that we have the support as we are one with spirit, we are one in love and light and we feel it and we know it in our bones and we say yes and we are comforted in this knowing. And I'm so very grateful and I just release my word into the beautiful law. The magical law. The magical law. The field that surrounds us and we just drop in our words. We drop in our prayers. We celebrate our blessings. And I just release into the law. Release, let go, and let God, and so it is. Amen. And now I introduce Cozy Comfy Arrington. Thank you for being here today. And Deb Santa Maria, thank you for your beautiful accompaniment on this journey of prayer and blessings. Thank you.
Now, I'm going to introduce someone we all know her name. I'd like to introduce you now to Constance Chapman. Constance? Thank you. What an incredible service this has been so far. I mean, incredible prayer, incredible announcements, and incredible, incredible song, Cozy. Thank you so much. I just want to do a very short introduction for Reverend Catherine Sachs. Uh, many of you know her uh, who've been around and some of you don't. And so this is just an opportunity if you don't know her to get to know a little bit about her. 
she came back and uh, she came to Oakland Center in 1994 when Reverend uh, Margaret Storch was a uh, minister and then she became a practitioner in 1998. Um, she was active for many, many years and well, she still is because ministers are always practitioners first. Um, and so she became a licensed minister in 2014 and immediately accepted a letter call uh, at the Oakland Center because we were in between ministers again. And uh, the, the interim minister that the board had hired his contract was up and we had not yet finished the calling in process. So Reverend Catherine held the fort for a year until July of 2015 um, when we welcomed Reverend Jeff into the village. Um, and at that point, as it was as it's a custom among the Centers for Spiritual Living, Reverend Catherine oriented Reverend Jeff and then left and went to Golden Gate Center to serve as staff minister there. She's now returned to Oakland Center and uh, we're very welcome to have her back. She's now uh, uh, rejoined her membership. Um, and one of the things that she has, that she did while she was here and since is she's, uh, she writes daily guide for the Science of Mind magazine and she's developed a class called Writing as a Spiritual Practice and just get your calendars out because she's going to be teaching that at Oakland Center starting July the 13th for six weeks. So put that on your calendar. Um, and in the meantime, please welcome Reverend Catherine as a member of our community and as a speaker today. So it's so good to have you back, Reverend Catherine. Thank you, Constance. You did, as always, support me in such a beautiful way. And I'm really, really glad to be back. It's so good to be talking to you today. And um, <laughs> Grateful to be speaking to you today on such a very juicy topic, this thing about stepping out and stepping up. Um, it's such a great science of mind theme in our teachings that we could probably spend an entire month of Sundays unpacking this, but I've only got 20 minutes. So let's just dive in and see how far we can get today and stay with me. We all know science of mind's tagline that, that short phrase, that little catchy thing that encapsulates what we're about. For us, it is change your thinking, change your life. Nothing sounds easier, does it? And nothing is more challenging. And sometimes for those who first come to this from a very different background, it can be a bit frightening. When I found Science of Mind way back, I remember how exhilarating and empowering it was to realize that by God and with God, I can co-create my life and that I have the divine right to do so. But considering where I was and where I started at the time, it also scared my pants off. I mean, back then, and I guess this is kind of how I started and stay with me if you will, my thoughts ran along these lines. You mean I am responsible for my life? What? What? You mean I can't blame other people for making me a victim? <laughs> you mean my parents and my ex-husband are not responsible for all of these unpleasant conditions in my life? Yeah. <laughs> kind of embarrassing when I think about it now, but maybe some of you can identify just a touch with how that began for you. And of course, over the years, I certainly moved beyond that fear and uh, identifying with those feelings. Now I can fully appreciate and totally get the sense of liberation and spiritual empowerment that science of mind offers us. Now in science of mind, we don't deny that a condition exists. We simply deny that it doesn't have to continue we can choose differently. And yet many of us, probably most of us at some time or other, we prefer to stay comfortably in our familiar pain and our discontent or discomfort rather than risk stepping up and stepping out and being that which we have called, we have been called here to be. The devil you know and all that. That, <clears throat> reluctance, that 
for me showed up in my being reluctant to really open up to God in my life. Because back then I knew, I mean, I knew that opening up to God would create radical changes in the life I had been living. And I also suspected that it even meant I would have to lose some of the people that I had been used to hanging around with. And so it was. Was it painful at the time? Yes. And would I do it again in a heartbeat? Over the years in science of mind, I have come to learn, and I totally believe, that each of us has a unique purpose to fulfill that no other person in the world can do. We are not here by a random accident. We are here by a sacred choice and a covenant with our soul's desire to know itself in and as one with God, as God and with all that is, all of life. If we choose to remain comfortable in our familiar discomfort, to stay in a small but safe life, we're missing out. And so is the world, which has need of the gifts that we bring, whether they be grand in public or small and intimate. Joseph Campbell, who was a professor who was widely, widely, highly regarded for his work in comparative religion and mythology, once wrote this, and you probably have heard it. We must be willing to let go of the life we had planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. Huh. I'm gonna read it again. We must be willing to let go of the life we had planned in order to have the life that is waiting for us. I sometimes think that we amuse our creator with our human perversity over this matter. Our reluctance to step out even plays out in many of the daily routines of mundane life. And I'm gonna use a true story about myself as an example and I'm going to ask that you go with me and be with me in this scenario, all too real scenario. I've gotten home from the market and I'm carrying a bag of groceries in one hand, one arm. I've got my purse slung over my shoulder. And in my other hand, I've got my keys and my mail, which I've picked up. So I get to my front door, which is locked. And I'm trying to maneuver myself so that I can unlock the front door and get in without dropping any of my precious stuff. Well, you know what happens, of course. I'm fumbling and fumbling, and of course, I drop the bag, the eggs break, and the door is still locked. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I say a not so mild expletive, back up, have to start over and clean up a huge mess. Well, it's funny in retrospect, but then later on, I read something from Mark Nepo that took this silly, irritating thing, and he placed it in a completely different metaphysical perspective. He wrote, it's such a simple thing, but in a moment of ego, we refuse to put down what we carry in order to open the door. We cannot hold on to things and enter. <laughs> I guess Mark Nepo and Joseph Campbell are trying to tell us the same thing. And so does our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. On the first page of the Science of Mind text, Dr. Holmes tells us that freedom is the birthright of every living person. We are free to choose and create with God, our experience of life, that that eternal creative process, which is God saying yes, is constant. It is persistent. One of our principal states, we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. I co-create my life. God says yes. 
So if this is true, and I know it is, how much are we willing to let God support us? Again, another one of those sayings that many of us have heard is, leap and the net will appear. Today, as we talk about stepping up, stepping out, I'd like to suggest to you that you don't need a net. For as we leap, we are borne aloft by the love of God, and we are sustained by the universal yes that is God delighting, expressing through us. Hmm. So in a nutshell, I would say, spirit supports its own expression. How could it not? I mean, how could spirit not support itself? And I am as much spirit as you are. Spirit supports its own expression. So how do we choose to express God in our lives? How do we choose to express God in our world? When I am unwilling to dare, to risk, to leap, I am expressing a very small God indeed. All of my words about trusting in God to support me for my greatest good, all of those words, they don't align with my actions. I am not walking my talk. And I have not walked my talk from time to time because I know how challenging and difficult and courageous it is to do just that. It's not always easy. Instead of stepping up and stepping out, risking judgment from others, risking looking wrong or foolish, sometimes we choose the easier path, the safer path the smaller path that doesn't ask us to stretch, to grow, to become more and open our hearts to a greater, more expansive vision of life and love. But before we get to judging ourselves about this, <laughs> remember, it really is a fairly normal human response. No one is above it, not the gurus, not the saints, not the budding Buddhas. Life is a learning process. It is not a, a test with a pass-fail grade. And because it is a process and a journey that we are constantly walking on, taking those steps. Sometimes it's good to ask myself, what have I learned thus far on my life's journey? And what gifts can I now bring to a new adventure? Instead of always looking ahead at what we haven't done yet, what we haven't accomplished, what we haven't achieved, it's out there. We can turn around just for a moment and look at how far we have come. Because I know that everyone here has risked You've taken a chance. You have stepped out and up at one time or another, maybe sometimes many times. And to help you remember that, I'd like to just for a few moments, invite you to join me in a very, very brief meditation as we kind of go back in time. So if it's comfortable for you, close your eyes. If not, fine, but just sit back, take a deep breath and go within. And in your mind's eye, let yourself go back years in your life. Just drifting back. And I invite you now to find yourself in high school. Back when you were a teenager with all those raging hormones and all of that energy. Just see yourself as you were. And what new wild ideas about your life started showing up about this time? When you were in your teens, what kind of future did you begin to imagine that you would live? 
Just let yourself remember that for a few moments and breathe gently into it. Now I invite you to bless your teenage self and love it because all teenagers need blessing and love. And say goodbye and move into the flow of time again. And this time, let's move forward into your young adulthood. Let's place yourself in college or in training or in the military or in whatever situations you are in as a young adult, just getting started. When you were in your 20s, how did you see your life unfolding then? What real goals did you begin to set for yourself? And feel the power of that time. And when you get a taste of that, I invite you to say goodbye to your young adult. Thank you, young adult. And now let's move forward again to place yourself into maturity. Let's say your 30s, your 40s. You've pretty much begun to really establish yourself in life. So look around you in your mind's eye and see how much you have changed. How often did you change your path, take a different turn, be willing to try something new? Over all those years, and so I invite you now to say goodbye to that and come back to the present and open your eyes if you've had them closed and be fully present in the now. With this retrospect process, we can see the different changes that we've made and how often we risked. And what I have found, and I would like to suggest to you that as you look at yourself in this way, your current safe boundaries were once unknown frontiers. I'll say it again. Your current safe boundaries were once unknown frontiers. You see? You have been on a soul journey since you took your first breath. And over the years, we have all gained talents and skills and abilities that other people need. And as we consider moving into that scary unknown, which of them do we bring with us and are we willing to share? Over the years, we have all gained beliefs or habits that no longer serve us. What are we willing to let go of? What am I willing to give up in order to be happy? These kinds of questions help us make intelligent, loving choices rather than make these knee-jerk reactions that so many of us have fallen prey to. So thinking about this this morning, I would say to you that you have been cast to play a very specific part in a divine pattern since your incarnation. You, me, everyone. Our soul calls to us continually to let it show up and to show out in the world. Forget that hiding your light under a bushel routine. I'm not even sure I know what a bushel is, but I'm not going to hide under it anymore. If you were living your life fully, what would you be doing? And if you aren't doing that, what is holding you back? 
Now, I well know how the world bombards us with all kinds of messages that tell us to stay in our lane, keep your head down, don't rock the boat. I got that one a lot. Don't speak up. So with early training like that, it's not difficult to understand why stepping up and stepping out doesn't come easily or naturally to many of us. And this is where our science of mind teachings proclaim a new message, good tidings of great joy. Our teachings are a perfect roadmap for our awakening and our way to co-create a richer life of greater satisfaction and daring. It's a way of creating a greater capacity for loving. Anyone who has taken one of our many classes can share a story of breakthrough, of insight, of a positive change that was transformative. And as one of today's readings says, good old Dr. Holmes, we must climb over the rocks of unbelief, pass around the barriers of doubt, and plunge into the stream of faith. Sounds very active, doesn't it? But isn't it great that we don't have to do all of that alone? Here at Oakland Center, we have an entire village of like-minded people who are willing to help, to guide, to encourage and support, <laughs> and to receive all of that same good stuff back from you with gratitude. And it's great to know that we have that. There's another, and I think final point I'd like to make as we talk about living our lives to the max and heeding our soul's call. Early on, earlier on, I said that the world needs what we have to give, whether it be huge, grand, public, magnificent, or small and intimate and sweet. And I meant that. Not everybody uh, is here to, um, I don't know, be on stage to touch hundreds of thousands of people with our fabulous TED Talks. Hmm. Doesn't matter. We're not here necessarily to be the next Thich Nhat Hanh or Mother Teresa. In fact, many heroes and saints live very quietly and without fanfare or even sometimes recognition. As Mother Teresa herself said, we cannot all do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. God is not keeping some kind of scorecard with points for the dramatic gesture. It didn't work that way. Several thousand years ago, even before Mother Teresa, Lumi wrote, Things are such that someone lifting a cup or watching the rain, petting a dog, or singing, just singing, could be doing as much for the universe as anyone. What you do is one thing, but how you do it makes all the difference in the world. And I can suggest that you can tell when you are following your soul's call, when what you are doing brings you joy, when it lets you feel fulfilled, when it brings love to the world in a gazillion little ways, when it supports your sense of being valued and needed. Stepping out is love. Stepping up is faith. Stepping back is fear. Which way do you wish to step? It's your choice. It's always your choice. Now, it is good to remember that stepping up and stepping out isn't always meaning flinging yourself off a cliff into the unknown. 
but it is about trusting in God's love for you, in God's will for your greatest good. So, in closing, love greatly. Fear not. And follow the call of your soul, knowing that the universe is rushing to place itself under your feet at that first step. No net required. And so it is. So let's move into prayer, shall we, on that note? As I leap off into what is, into all that is, which is God itself, and I invite everyone to join me because we are one. There is only one. It is only God. It is the love, the flow, the all that is. And in that, I know that this is my source, my substance, the ground upon which I stand. And I am supported wholly, loved unconditionally. And this is the truth for all of us so that I know for each person the willingness to allow our lives to become bigger, more joyful, richer, more fulfilling. Whether it be petting a dog, creating a program, whether it be planting a flower, or speaking in prayer. We are here to give voice to that which is and to proclaim its goodness. And I accept this responsibility. I accept this life. I accept my role in it with gratitude. And I know that as we live in this sense of givingness and gratitude, I can speak my word now for this month's nonprofit partner, Rainforest Action Network. How perfect for this birthday. Rainforest Action Network, a global network supporting and working closely with frontline communities, providing cutting edge research and analysis to take action against the companies and industries that drive deforestation and climate change so that we bless this nonprofit agency. I speak a word for, oh my God, our planet, Mother Earth, the beloved Gaia. Gratitude for her beauty, her resilience, and our increasingly mindful stewardship of her, living in harmony with life itself. I bless our youth, the youth of this village and the youth of all the world, knowing that these young people are guided by the loving mind and heart of spirit and who are willing to risk and step out as only young people can be. I bless everyone in service for creating a world that works for everyone, no exceptions. And moving us to closer to home now, I speak a word of love and comfort and healing for those who are impacted by challenges and conditions that may not be what is needed. And I speak this word for Kathleen Hooper, Audra Jones, Deborah and Ricardo Roca, Mary Propercy, Denise Johnson, Michael Mendez, and all of those impacted by climate change weather and COVID-19. And I speak a word of transition, love, peace, and comfort for Reverend Jeffrey Anderson as he soars and sings and looks back with love at the village he has done so much to create. And I speak a word of loving comfort for his family, his friends, and for all of us here in Oakland who cared so much and who miss him to this day. I release this word into the law, which has always said yes, into that universe which is supporting totally that which is set into it. And 
I am grateful. I am so grateful. So that in gratitude and in confidence and in courage, I let it go. I let it be. And so it is. Thank you for staying with us and being here and for being in prayer and keep continuing that consciousness of the goodness and the givingness of life. It's time to move into that great time when we give to the spiritual nourishment that this community offers. This is when we practice the art of giving and receiving and we show up as God in action with our generosity. And we have a giving affirmation that really says something that I would like you all to say with me. And that affirmation is this. This gift I give is God in action. It's God in action. It does good work in the world and it blesses creation. And there are so many wonderful, easy ways to be God in action for Oakland Center ways of giving. You can just simply click on that wonderful donate button on the internet, bam, and it's done. You could even text something to that number that's shown on your screen. That's you know pretty cool. And you know what you could do? You can even write an old fashioned check and mail it to us. It's pretty good, it makes it very easy. And what you know is that everything you give with joyful heart and gratitude comes back to you, pressed down, multiplied, and overflowing. And so it is. And I would like to give this back now to beloved Regina Buckwalter as our wonderful practitioner. Hey, so good to see you, Catherine. Reverend Catherine Sachs, sorry, Reverend Catherine Sachs, thank you for showing up for us today and reminding us of the spiritual principles that support us in our daily life and give us comfort. Uh, thank you, everybody that showed up today to create this amazing community that we are all part of and the support and nurturing that we give one another in prayer <clears throat> as we gather here on Sunday and throughout the week. Thank you for our wonderful musicians, Cozy. Thank you. Thank you for your passionate and very heartfelt music that you bring to us. And of course, Deb Samp to Maria, thank you. Thank you. Also, thank you to all of the tech people that came today and that are always on board to make this possible and do it very gracefully. Um, yeah, pretty amazing how we can do this every Sunday and we've been doing it every Sunday now for a year. And also Zoe will be with us hosting the prayer room. Um, so any of those people, any of those folks out there that would like prayer today, please, please stick around and we will put you in a room and we will pray you up today. And if you cannot do that today and you want a prayer during the week, just go to oaklandcsl.org and you will, your needs will be addressed through the practitioners on board that are here to support the community in prayer throughout the week. So now it's closing affirmation time. And the closing affirmation is, I confidently step up and into my greatness. Exactly what Reverend Catherine was talking about as we step up into our greatness, fearlessly, as we are one with God. And so it is. Thank you. And now it is again time for Kenneth and Deb Santa Maria to... Uh, bring even more music into our minds and hearts and our lives today. Thank you, Kevin, Kenneth, and Deb. See you in the prayer room. Bye-bye. Right, everybody. Oh, happy day, right? Please join us as we sing the closing congregational song, Light of the Spirit, right? Yes. Here we go. Hey. Shine on you as God.
Blessings, everyone. Remember to love more and judge less. Amen.